Okay. What I want to do for you guys just real quick here is <clears throat> discuss the different stages there are in an altercation. So if you think of it this way, there's three stages in every single kind of altercation. I don't care if you're talking about a boxing match, match, a wrestling, a, you know, like a wrestling match, an MMA match, a street fight, um, even a violent attack, let's say up against an old lady somewhere, okay? All right, there's gonna be three stages. The first stage, everybody know what it's called? What is it called? Probing. Probing, yeah. Okay, so the first one's called the probing stage. Second one's called what? Rally. Rally, very good job. And the last one's called what? Activity. Follow. Follow. So in every single kind of an altercation, there's going to be these three stages. <clears throat> Let's talk about for a boxer real quick. For the probing stage, what does a boxer do in this stage? What does a boxer do in this stage? Fake. Okay. You could fake. What else? Intercept. For a boxer? Uh, so circle around. No. Okay, circle around in a circle, right? What else? Jab. You can jab on out. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense? Really play a good distancing game, right? <laughs> Everybody with me on that? What is a boxer going to do ideally for the rally stage? Move. Go in. Okay. Move where? You're going to move in. You're going to throw your combos. Move in. You're going to throw your combos. Try to do the Okay. Follow up stage. What is a boxer really looking for? You're going to finish him. Yeah. He's going to look for that finish up move, right? Okay. Look for the finish up move. Maybe an uppercut, good solid hook, right? Let's talk about a wrestler. Maybe just like, you know, high school wrestler, high school wrestler's game plan. What's going to happen right at the start, right in the probing stage for a wrestler? Sam circle and fake. Okay. Circle. You ever heard them kind of play that hand game, you know? They're kind of just slapping hands away from each other, trying to get a hold of each other's neck, right? Yeah. Okay, right? What about the rally stage? Lock up. Lock up? Good. What else could happen there? Um, going for a takedown. Takedown, right? Okay, the shot. Or you're waiting for a mistake. Okay, yeah, maybe waiting for a mistake. Okay, right? Possibly. What about the follow-up? For a wrestler now, what does a wrestler really focus on? The pin, right? Okay, the pin. Okay, very good job. What does an MMA guy do? Probing stage. You're circling, you're jabbing, you're faking. Yeah, a lot of Yeah, this time you have your jab. You have kind of some feel out kicks right there, right? Okay. Right. Right. <clears throat> what about the rally stage? Take downs. Yeah, take down. Could take down, right? Or it could do what? I've actually seen them straight blast. You can see them straight blast. Right. All right, all right. Which is nothing more than combinations, right? It's nothing more than a jab, followed by what? Cross, followed by what? Jab, right? Okay. What about the follow up? What do we look for? Well, submission. Yeah, submission against the fence. Big knees. Yeah. Uh -huh. A choke, a lock, right? Something like that. Lock. For the JKD man, what does a JKD man try to focus on in the probing stage? Okay, yeah. Notice how I don't need you guys to tell me specific techniques. I want you guys to tell me specific concepts, overriding principles, right? Okay. So we have the interception, right? The interception. What else could happen here? Destructions. Destructions, right? What else could happen? Fake. Fakes. What about the rally stage? Think about conceptually now. What are we trying to do in the rally stage? Trying to push the gap. Okay. I would say you're trying to close the gap. 
or you're trying to enter on in. Everybody with me on that? You're trying to enter on in, right? You're trying to close the gap. Why is that? Why is that important? We want to close that gap so because our, our most effective tools are in close quarters. Yep. And ideally focus on close quarters to get in there and terminate the fight. Using our elbows, knees, our head bits, our ballistic tools. Okay. Right. Why is it important to take a look at this? Why is it important to take a look at everybody's game plan? Why is that important? That's a perfect way to put it, okay? Ideally, what we're doing is we're taking a look at all this and trying to take a look maybe the more positive attributes, right? All right? Or taking a look at the things that really work, kind of see what works the best kind of stuff, you know? You could get critical and say, well, for this person, a wrestler, maybe going for a pin is not going to serve us out in the street. Yeah. You follow me on that? Okay. <laughs> or maybe specifically using, let's say, a jab or just working on circling is not necessarily going to get us to our end game as far as escaping or surviving altercation. You follow me on that? Right? So we can learn from maybe their mistakes or maybe better what they're doing. That's good. How can we use this? And, and by the way, that's more of the offensive view. How can we use this in more of a defensive view? Or a defensive way? Everybody's going to do one of those things. But okay. Who's coming after you? Yeah. So what? To know what to do. Yeah, okay, all right. I'm gonna go one step further. We can now assess people much better, right? Okay. Bruce Lee used to call it the, the preliminary analysis, right? You're kind of sizing your, you know, your opponent up saying, okay, you know what? I see you come on in here with his hands held high like this, all right? Ready to start launching this. I'm probably gonna call that guy a what? Stand up. I'm probably gonna call that guy a boxer, right? Okay. So I know what kinds of tools that he might be using. Not only that, but then I know what kind of you tools that I could do that, that I could actually do more successfully. Does that make sense? If I see somebody with their hands a little bit lower, kind of squatting down, keep on looking down at my low line right there, I might say that that guy's a what? Wrestle. A wrestler, right? So now I can use that defensively, or I can use it offensively. You follow me on that? So when you take a look at this right here, what I don't want you guys to do is, is to say, oh, this is horrible, this guy's plan doesn't work, this guy, no. Are there boxers that box really well using these, these goals, these objectives? Without a doubt. Are there wrestlers that can do the exact same thing? Yes. Are there MMA guys? Yes, without a doubt. Are there Kung Fu guys? Without a doubt. Are there Karate guys? Yes. Okay. What I simply want you guys to do is, is use this as a tool that we can use it, first of all, offensively, okay, to know what we should do, what are the best tools. But I also want you guys to use it defensively so we can, not, so we can assess people quicker so we know how to get past their kind of lines of attack and things like that. Does that make sense? Right. So once again, this is just what I call uh, the comparative, all right, and this is a great kind of study thing you can use from a visual standpoint. So you can kind of say, okay, well, this is kind of a boxer's game plan. This is a wrestler's game plan. This is an MMA you know, guy's game plan. And from there, where do I see weak points in my own game? All right? And also, you know, you know, where do I see strengths that I can continue to build up? Everybody with me as far as that goes? Okay. Right. So it's important to make sure you train with this. That's the why. It's important to know this so you know where your strengths are and your weaknesses. But then also, from a functional standpoint, when we actually get in an altercation, you know, then we can discuss how to use this as well. Is everybody on the same page with me?